so gradient you all know mild moderate severe depending on the valve area and the gradient and also pressure half time and all these the gradients uh, not instead of sticking to one you have to uh, go for the multiple uh, parameters and take the average and exercise gradient of more than 15 mm of mercury with the dobutamine uh, test gradient of more than 18 are very significant and they require the uh, intervention now coming to the assessment there is no single gold standard and we have direct as well as indirect planimetry continuity equation proximal velocity surface area that is psa these are all important and indirect one are pressure half time and the doppler gradient and mo though nowadays we are not doing it is very important for the uh, uh, assessment because the this is the normal uh, m complex when you get the mitral valve that is the anterior mitral leaflet and w for the posterior mitral leaflet and during the severe mitral stenosis the ef slope is reduced in atrial fibrillation with the fast ventricular rate this is how the m mode looks like coming to the mitral valve area by planimetry it is highly accurate and then performed with the experienced echocardiographer then you can see i have seen as small as 0.2 square centimeters that means just 2 mm and doing the balloon dilatation was so difficult and this is how mild moderate and severe are associated now what are the tips for measurement of the mitral valve orifice area gain setting should be just sufficient to visualize the whole contour of the mitral valve and that is very important unless you adjust the gain you will not be assessing properly and here you can see that very good image quality is needed and any poor um, image quality you will be underestimating or overestimating highly deformed valve due to the prior valvotomy or severe subvalvular obstruction eccentric orifice severe ar and atrial fibrillation all these they hamper the assessment so here the commissural fusion should be looked for carefully if you are sending the patient for the balloon dilatation so that details should be given whenever the echo is given to you the transmitral gradient can be determined by continuous wave doppler mitral inflow during the dash lay derived from the transmitral velocity flow curve using the simplified bernoulli equation and this is how we calculate but the magnitude of the pressure gradient depends not only on the valve obstruction but also on the flow of the and the volume rate and increase in the cardiac output tachycardia coexisting with mr and all this can overestimate the mitral stenosis so here they have said mitral stenosis with mild mr so that means they have not overassess uh, probably the assessment is right then pressure half time is very important hetels method calculates the functional orifice it is useful because it gives information both valvular as well as, as well as the subvalvular in the indian subcontinent the subvalvular fusion is very very important in our country for any intervention that has to be looked for so whenever there is ms with atrial fibrillation we have to be careful but here the submitral orifice you can see that this is the orifice for the mitral valve and this the submitral fusion is so severe and in such a patient when you are doing the balloon dilatation you may rupture the cordae and get into the mr and that's why you can see that the submitral fusion is so much important the thickening is there submitral fusion and especially when you insert the balloon you can see that the distal portion gets deformed and that is because it is caught in the cordae for this what we do is we put the peripheral balloon dilate first the papil i mean papillary muscle and uh, uh, what to say like uh, Uh, uh submitral structures and then do the balloon dilatation otherwise you land in trouble so here the submitral uh, structures are not mentioned in the report given and it is said mild uh, mitral regurgitation so how do you calculate the mild, mild mitral regurgitation when the vena contacta is less than 3 mm it is mild between 3 to 6 or 7 it is moderate more than 7 it is severe but what is important is if there is an eccentric jet and then there is a reflex into the pulmonary veins it is a severe though vena contracta or the eyeballing is not correct that is very important 
So when there is a combination of MS with AR as in our case, this is the most common one. Only 10% of them have severe AR. Most of them they have mild. And that's how we know when there is a mild AR, we can still do the balloon dilatation provided that not much of calcification. If increased LVDP decreases the mitral stenosis gradient and if both are severe, then we are underestimating both. So clinical findings, severe MS may mask the white pulse pressure and then AR murmur versus gram steel murmur should be distinguished. But here the pH is 75, there is no PR on the echo and hence we are not bothered about the cl clinical distinguishing. So whenever there is aortic insufficiency, it precludes the acute, uh, I mean, accurate measurement of the pressure half time. You can see that there are two jets. One jet is the candle flame appearance of the mitral stenosis and the other jet is the AR jet. So when two jets are coming on the echo assessment, we have to be very careful. Otherwise, if your cursor comes on the AR jet, you will be overestimating. And that's how you should be very careful when your cursor is put on the jet. Whenever we consider AR in MS, widening of the pulse pressure and uh, epical impulse becomes uh, hyperdynamic instead of the tapping epical impulse. And that's how it is very important. Now coming to the assessment of the aortic regurgitation, the LV dimensions are taken. In mitral stenosis, LV dimensions are less because it is underfilled. But when there is associated AR, LV dimensions are increased. So here AR on the left ventricle uh, uh, effect is seen. And apart from that, when you do the M mode, I showed you the M complex or the EF slope is reduced. But in presence of AR, you can see that there is a fluttering of the AML. And this fluttering of the AML indicates that AR jet is hitting the anterior mitral leaflet and that's why it is fluttering. That means it is significant. So this is how you have to decide the AR. And the pressure half time is very important uh, for assessing the uh, aortic regurgitation. Apart from the uh, deceleration slope, what is important is uh, they can also have uh, 